Brand nerds, brand nerds, brand nerds. We are at you with a special edition of Brands, Beats, and Bites. And this is What's Poppin'? What's Poppin', LT? What's Poppin'? March Madness is Poppin', D. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that is what's Poppin', brand nerds. March Madness. We are in, this is the Thursday where all the games began. I think, uh, well, I know all the men's games began. I, I, I don't know whether women's games began today. I think that might be. Uh, tomorrow. But anyway, the tournament kicks off today. Um, you all know we like to do special editions. We did one for the Super Bowl. We're doing one for now. And this year is a little bit different, LT. Let the brand nerds know what's happening with March Madness. Yeah, D, it really is interesting. You know, we've we've seen a lot in our years, both as fans and as corporate partners uh, in this world. And uh, so this is what we wanted to hit you from both angles, brand nerds. So we're going to give you a couple of key metrics. So uh, brand nerds, for those who may not follow us, follow us, the NCAA does a selection show before each the, of the men's and women's tournament. And the TV partners do the selection show. So um, uh, the CBS and, and Turner does the men's and ESPN does the women's. So D, mm -hmm. Would you hazard, so I'm going to give you some numbers. So the ratings for the men's selection show for this year was 5.91 million viewers, which in today's television climate, that's a lot of people, right? Yep, yep. And it was up 16% versus last year. So check out what the women did this year on ESPN. Um, they increased 52% from 2023, their women's selection show, with 1.94 million viewers, which is, by the way, the highest rating that the selection show has ever had. So wow. that gives you some indication of what's happening both in men's and women's games and the trajectory of both. Also, yep. I'm going to hit you with yep. some other key ratings. From last year, from 2023, the women's championship game between LSU and Iowa drew 9.9 .9 million viewers, which made it the most viewed women's college basketball game ever. And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, well, that's great for women – it was also the most viewed college basketball game on all the ESPN platforms last year, men's or women's. So by wow. far the number one rating on all the ESPN for college basketball, men's or women's. Yeah. And the final four, so that was the championship game, the, the yeah. actual final four, so it's the final and then the two semifinals, was also that most viewed weekend for, for on record where they had 6.5 million viewers and was an 87% increase from 2022. Conversely, the men's in 2023, the final between UConn and San Diego State was the lowest rated NCAA men's ah. final ever, drawing okay. 14.7 million viewers. Again, still more viewers than women, but yep, yep, it's yep. the trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. um, in 2022, for context, there were more than 17 million viewers to see my North Carolina Tar Heels play Kansas, which are obviously the two real blue bloods yeah, of college blue bloods, basketball, yeah. right? Yeah. Have a lot of followings. So mm -hmm. those are just some key metrics as we go into 2024 and uh, us talking about this. So D, what's your reaction to some of these numbers? Not surprised. Yep. Either way, men's game uh, and the numbers you listed there or the women's uh, game and the numbers you listed there Many moons ago, uh, there was a brilliant sports commissioner. His name is David Stern. You know him well, LT. Rest in power, David Stern. Yep. Yep. Former commissioner of the NBA, uh, Adam Silver, who's currently the commissioner, was the deputy commissioner under the iconic David Stern. David Stern made a decision in the 80s. Yep. The way to grow that league was through star players. Not the teams, yep, but star players. And here we go at that time into the uh, magic bird period mm -hmm. as the players. Uh, and then, you know, also, Dr. J was around then. Yep. They then hand the torch to, uh, to Jordan. Jordan then brings along, or the league brings along, Kobe and Shaq and AI and the list goes on, but it was a players-based strategy, star yep. strategy, and it is the sport today, uh, professional basketball, where arguably the players have the most power. Yep. Now let's go, let's connect that to the women's uh, college game today. Yep. 
It is about the players and the personalities. One could say that with the retirement of Coach Saban from Alabama uh, this year and Coach Krzyzewski from Duke several years ago, and then uh, your great coach who coached at Kansas and at UNC, uh, what, what's the brother's Roy name Williams. again? Roy, Roy Williams. That in the world of sports today, the two most relevant coaches are Coach Prime from Colorado and Coach Don Staley, head hmm. basketball coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks, the number one seed in the tournament today. Right. One could also argue right now that Caitlin Clark yep. is the number one personality in all of college basketball, yep. whether men's or women's. And you've got Angel Reese and you've got Juju out in uh, South Carolina. So none of these numbers surprise me because I think the sport of uh, the women's basketball game has the bigger personalities. Totally agree with you. And it's it's backed. I looked this up, right? And again, some of this is dubious brand nerds, but you'll have to go with uh, with me here uh, for some other metrics I'm going to hit you. So Caitlin Clark, according to sportskedia.com, has a three makes three point one million dollars from NIL. Angel okay. Reese, again, as you alluded to, from yeah. LSU makes one point eight million. On the men's side, the number one. Uh, college basketball player in, in terms of NIL is Bronny James. That's LeBron's son. With all due yep. respect to Bronny, that's not really because of his game. It's because of his lineage, right? I, um, I agree, yeah. Right? And then the next earner, again, this is according to uh, to on3.com, is Hansel Emanuel from Austin P, who has a huge social media following, and he, ha he makes $1.2 million. My man okay. Armando Baycott, shout out Tar Heels. Um, he makes about nine hundred thirty thousand to center for North Carolina. Okay. But look yeah. at even the money, because you know the the women, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are household names for sports fans, right? Yeah. The men yeah. aren't. Bronny only is because of his because of his dad. If we're being really truthful, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that. That's so true. But I got to call out the, the in infinite wisdom. This is the NCAA where I just, they just don't understand it sometimes how much Tony Kornheiser, who we love, D on PTS. Yes, we love, we love them and Will Bond. We love them. Well, one of the things Tony says about all big sporting events, it's a television show, right? Yes. Yes. So because it's a television show, you have to be aware of that. It's incredible that they have Iowa and LSU in the same bracket. That's a tragedy. It's unbelievable. So yes. they're going to lose one of them for sure for the final four. It's yep. it's not setting anything up that they they just they just need to be smart at what are they doing? That's terrible. Yeah, if if you have in the final four LSU Iowa South Carolina, and this is no disrespect to the, right. to the other teams, and UConn, uh, for right. example. Or USC, because oh, USC is oh, up and coming in the women's oh, game, too. Or you, right? and, and or USC. Yeah, you, you've got something. That, that's a TV show. Yeah. To, to Tony Kornheiser's point, uh, that, that's a TV show. Uh, why do you think this is happening, Larry? Why? I just think that it, the NCAA is clueless. I, I just think that, um, you know, the folks who who run the show over there don't really understand that it's a TV show and that it's not putting the fix in or anything. They have to win to get there. But what we're saying is to set up accordingly where you can actually at least put in motion what would be best for the sport. That's what we're saying. That's what yeah. would be best for the sport. And of course, if Caitlin Clark and Iowa, who's who are not a number one seed, who they they can't make it there, then they can't make it there. That's on them. But why right. why set it up beforehand? That that just doesn't make sense. Um, and I, I just find it's interesting, D, as sports fans, there's so much more yak about the women's game. And I think you you put it perfectly with what you led with the NBA. There are stars in, in women's college basketball, and th and through no fault of the men. You know, the best players leave. And I give, you know, I'm yeah. a full supporter of that. I am so too. the best players leave and you don't 
feel the same connection because they're one and done. I will say right. this, my Tar Heels, RJ Davis and Armando Baycott, they've been there a long time. Um, they have, yeah. They, they were both prominent players in the 2022 team that lost in the finals. And so I will tell you this, as a, as a, a, a UNC alum and following that team, you do have some uh, continuity because you have those. But let's face it, neither one of those guys, through I have great respect for them, neither one of them are going to be stars in the NBA. So no. they don't become people that the overall sports fan is glomming on to see, like a Caitlin Clark is. Larry, last year's tournament, I realized something that flipped that I that got by me. And part of it is exactly what you're talking about now. And that is uh, on the men's side of the bracket. Uh, if they're truly talented, they want to go to the league. So they're in, they're only in college as long as it takes for them to go to the league. They want the exposure and they want the money. On the women's side with NIL in particular, some of these college athletes will take a pay decrease. Yes. When they go to the uh, go to the uh, to the league, the W. Uh, but but here's something that stuck with me. Caitlin Clark, when she would make these long, ridiculous three point shots, she would she would put up the whole like you can't see me, the whole John Cena, you can't see me. And when they played Angel Reese in the LSU Tigers, yeah. and lost, this is Iowa. Angel Reese put up the same side sign to Caitlin Clark like yo you can't see me now and that's the kind of um trash talking if you will that I'm accustomed to seeing yep. in the NBA and I used to be accustomed to seeing in men's college basketball I don't see that anymore in men's college basketball I see that in women's uh, college basketball because the personalities are bigger they're bigger they are bigger and you know what's interesting? You bring up the money equation, and we and we again we brought it up with Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's prominent on State Farm commercials with NBA players, like it's you know, and and brand nerds. That there's a reason for that because she has a real following. What I think is really interesting is that she's already announced that she's going to go to the WNBA, even yep. though um, the WNBA has pretty strict salary caps. She's not going to make a lot of money uh, from the WNBA, but I would imagine that she's already talked to uh, the folks that she, you know, her corporate partners. And I would have to imagine that her status is even elevated uh, beyond that, unless she's just doing it for pure basketball reasons that she just wants to play with the best players. Cause she could come back next year and she's already announced she's not. See, I would say I agree, Larry, but what I don't know is when you get to the NBA and the league has sponsorship deals, does that preclude some other companies who don't have a league deal, but might be a competitor to someone that does, does that preclude them from saying, I'm going to do a deal with you, Caitlin Clark, or Angel Reese, or if Juju goes pro, she probably won't, won't uh, after, after a freshman year, but she could. Does that, do they say, I don't, I don't want to go in that area because I'm going to be dwarfed by the NBA, or do they think of it as a guerrilla move? But I will say this is that full disclosure, brand nerds, I mentioned Coach Prime and Coach Staley earlier. Uh, we have a, a great relationship with uh, with Aflac, uh, Garth and Mal and Mad and Alex and then the Dagger fam, all of the Dagger fam, um, uh, Mike, Mike P and the crew over there. We work well with them. Our companies work well with them. It, it's just amazing to see someone like a Coach Staley be a states person for the entire game of basketball. It's just yeah. amazing to watch her represent the game of basketball, both domestically and globally. As you all know, they had a We Play game in November to start the season where South Carolina played Notre Dame in Paris. Yeah. So this is a thing. This is a thing. Well, and you you raise something else too. When you think about the prominent coaches in in, in the women's game, again, you think of Don Staley, right? And yep. and obviously, uh, you have two two of the you know most prominent coaches um, 
in women's college basketball uh, history, Gino, right? Gino, yes. Over, yeah. over in UConn, Gino Ariema. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, down here at the farm in Stanford, um, you have a woman who has been, and I'm blanking on her name. Sorry, I, uh, I'm, I'm picturing her now. That's um, all right. We're going to keep, keep, keep talking. I'm going to find yeah. it. I'm going to find so it. So you, you, have, you have the women's college game has coaches that have that, have that longevity and, um, and people know the coaches. In the men's game, there's been a big transition. You mentioned Coach K. You mentioned Roy Williams. You know, those people have transitioned on. The John Thompsons, the Bobby Knights, who were larger than life, Jim Beheim. You know, those folks are no longer there. And so there hasn't been the same, uh, there hasn't been the same thing that's happened where these coaches have become larger than life in the, in the men's game. And Tara Vanderveer, thanks, D, is, uh, is who I was just blanking on. And Tara's got the all, she's the, she's the number one wins uh, coach of all time in all of basketball right now. Uh, her, yeah. Gino's very close, but uh, they're, you know, they're right there. So there's also that going on in the women's game too. So the women's game has a lot of great things going for it. And the men's game is in serious transition. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's my challenge to the brand nerds out there who are running brands and businesses. Maybe up until now uh, for your brand uh, or business, you have thought of using men uh, as, as athletes, either amateur or professional you've thought of them in the lead uh, position or role for your brand. Because even in State Farm, what you have is you've got, uh, you've got Jimmy Buckets, Hemi from the Miami Heat. He pops up first. Then I think Caitlin comes. Yeah. And then after Caitlin, then there's, a, there's a, a Reggie who says, oh, an old pacer. That's part of the, the joke yeah, there. Reggie Miller. Yep. Yep. Reggie Miller, thank you. So she's a part of a, like a collection. Right. But it starts with it starts with Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler. Got to start somewhere though. That's a prominent position oh, though. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what my challenge is to the to the brand nerds out there is to do what Affleck is 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 doing. Push those chips out there. Go Lean the in really really hard to the women's side of this from a personality perspective because it it could be better for your brand. Might be better. Yeah, and the other thing to mention, we, we've circled around it, but I want to hit it directly. Because the men's game doesn't have stars, right? Yeah. Um, because of what we said before, because the best players, you know, and, and by the way, some of the, some of the, best, um, some of the best players now in the, N, in the NBA are, um, are international players as well, yeah. right? So you, don't, right. you used to Great get point. the best players coming through college basketball. And some players like Jonathan Kaminga on the Warriors, who was is from Africa, but has lived here since he was 13. He didn't play college basketball. He went straight to the G League, right? And yeah. so some of these great, um, some of these great players never even see college basketball. And so now all of a sudden they're not relying on stars. And what happened yep. last year, um, you have what the best thing for TV ratings for the tournament. Many people have talked about this. You want a great upset in the first round or two. So you see the Cinderella story, and we can all relate to that. But ultimately, in the final four, you want the North Carolinas and the Kansas. Yes. And, and, and those, those blue bloods, Kentucky and whatnot, who, are, uh, who people really know and either love or hate, and, they're gonna, yeah. and, and they're, those are going to draw ratings. So that's the ideal thing to happen in the men's side. But it, it's because, you know, back in the day, D, when we, we remember when Jordan was playing – in the NCAA tournament, when Magic and Bird played in the final, we yeah. knew they were the two best players. Like it was star power and all these other things. Now you just don't have any star power, so you're relying on all these other things. Yeah, I'll say this, and then we we can go to the close. Yep, I didn't watch uh, the play in uh, for the 16 C versus 16 C. I think it was Virginia, Virginia against Colorado State. That was one of the games, yeah. yeah one, of, one of the play-in games. And, but what I heard was that there were 59 minutes of real time between uh, uh, buckets for Virginia. Now, Virginia oh. won a national championship in 2019, brand nerds. That's five years ago. Yeah. 59 real minutes between buckets. Be, be, between a field goal. Oh, brutal. When you got that kind of thing happening, 
Brutal. Uh, that, that's not a TV show, Larry. No, okay. that's, not that is, that's, that, show. that's not a TV show. So, hey, more power to the uh, to the women. More power. More power to the women. That's what we say. They've they've got the up and coming. They've got the up and coming brands, brand nerds. That was that. That's what we're really saying. So keep your eye out on that. And uh, with that, we're gonna we're gonna hit the show close, uh, brand nerds. Thanks so much for listening to this what's poppin edition of brands beats and bites the executive producers are jeff shirley daryl dc cobb and larry tame and haley cobb and jay tate and tom dioro that is he and if you do like this podcast please subscribe and share it for those on apple Podcasts. if you are so inclined we love those excellent reviews we hope you enjoyed this podcast and we look forward to next time where we will have more insightful and enlightening talk about marketing 